I decided I was not going to let the first draft of history stand. The first draft of history was written by reporters, sort of through the fog of COVID, as I call it in the book, and was told by a lot of people who weren't in the room, non primary sources, people with particular political motivations. There was a lot of politics going on during those two years. And so I told myself when I left that I was going to tell the story as someone who lived it, as someone who was there during the pandemic, being New York being ground zero globally, a once in a century pandemic, someone who was on the phone fighting with Jared Kushner in the White House dealing with Donald Trump, and then ultimately, you know, dealing with scandal and being there as the administration unraveled. And so that was the purpose of the book. I wanted to let the public into the room, onto the phone, sort of living with me what those two insane years were, given the gravity of what they meant for everyone else. You know, the, the, all of the different fallout from both the pandemic and the government being overturned. So that was the purpose of the book. When reading the book, it's almost like COVID seemed like yesterday and so far away, so long ago. And you really lift the curtain on what it was like serving in the Cuomo administration. and. Let's remember, Governor Cuomo, at the beginning of the pandemic, he was America's governor. He was lauded as the nation's voice when it comes to COVID. You did mention that you had direct lines to the White House. You detail in the book your calls with Jared Kushner. Can you give our viewers one of your favorite anecdotes of that time? Sure. I mean, I'm not sure it's my favorite anecdote per se, but I think something people will find really interesting, which was that in the summer of 2020, um, there was a spike in crime, as people may remember, all across the country. And Trump, I think, sort of decided in that moment that he thought that he could be commander in chief and he was going to send, you know, the troops into all of these cities and deal with crime and that it would resonate with suburban voters and it would help him electorally to look tough on crime, make democratic cities look weak. And we were in this period where, as I describe it in the book, it had been leaked to the press that they were thinking about sending troops into New York City. And I sort of go into panic mode because anyone who knows anything about New York City, particularly during those days, it was like tinderbox, especially post George Floyd. It was like tinderbox. And the one thing New Yorkers all agreed on was their disdain for Donald Trump. And if Donald Trump had sent federal troops into New York City during that time period, we believed it would have erupted. It would have caused, it would have been an unmitigated disaster. And so in the book, I sort of talk about you know, we're seeing these press reports, we don't know what's going on. And I go into the backyard of the mansion and I just start dialing. Every reporter I knew, people at the NYPD, people at the state police, people in Washington trying to figure it out. And then I just decide, screw it, time to go through the front door. And I pick up the phone and call Jared and he answers the phone. And as I detail in the book, we get into this sort of rough and tumble conversation back and forth that ends with the two of us screaming at each other, where he, he lets it be known on the phone that at a bare minimum they were very seriously considering sending federal troops into new york and i'm you know yelling at him people here hate you you break it you buy it you do not want to do this and he said you know i hear you melissa i got it and we hang up the phone and i was like okay i think we dodged this bullet and i, I immediately tell the governor and the next day trump releases the list of cities that he's sending troops into and new york is not on it and as i as i say in the book the governor picks up the phone and calls trump and says it's enough we can't, we can't do this. We can't be living like this. These are serious times. What do I need to do to get you to stop? And the governor and president come to an agreement where if the governor stops criticizing the president of the United States on his COVID response, in return, he won't send federal troops into New York. So the book is sort of jam packed with anecdotes like that, that really bring the public into our shoes on what was going on on the ground politically during COVID.